Welcome to a quick introduction to The Amos and Andy Show. This old TV series started in 1951 and follows two pals in Harlem, New York. Made by Charles Coral and Freeman Gostin, people loved it for its funny moments and memorable characters. As you watch, you'll see lots of funny, surprising, and sometimes sad scenes. Stick around to learn some cool facts and stories about the show. Have you ever thought about a scene or moment that really stuck with you? Or maybe you're interested in some not-so-well-known facts that make this series even more interesting. We'd love to hear your favorite memories or experiences with the Amos and Andy show. Share them below. Stay tuned for more cool stuff about this series. You won't want to miss it. Two contrasting reviews provide insights into the Amos and Andy show, a TV series from 1951. One reviewer recalls the show's popularity, reminiscing about a time when it captivated audiences to the extent that movie theaters in Wilmington depaused screenings to broadcast it. They questioned the criticism it faced, arguing that similar comedic antics in other shows, such as those featuring Lou Costello, were well received without controversy. The reviewer laments that due to societal pressures, many talented actors associated with the show were denied recognition and opportunities, attributing this to an overreaction from certain groups. Another reviewer categorizes sitcoms into two types, those with simple, heartwarming stories and those focused on delivering laughs through eccentric characters. They assert that the Amos and Andy show falls into the latter category, portraying exaggerated personalities like the conniving Kingfish and the easily manipulated Andy. The reviewer rejects claims of racism, emphasizing that the characters were meant for comedic effect rather than as representative of any community. They express frustration over the show's cancellation due to protests, which they perceive as a setback for both the talented cast and the broader representation of African Americans on television. In both reviews, there's a sentiment of disappointment regarding the cancellation of the Amos and Andy show and the impact it had on the careers of its actors. They also criticize the lingering effects of past controversies on modern media and call for a reassessment of the show's legacy. The opening and closing titles of the series featured Angel's Serenade by Gitano Braga, performed by the Jeff Alexander Chorus. This music was chosen because it was free and out of copyright by the time the series aired. Nick Stewart, who played a role in the series, was fired during its last season. Stewart also hosted Ebony Showcase Presents, a variety show from the theater he founded. The producers felt that his commitment to his theater was interfering with his work on the show. They wanted Stewart to leave the Ebony Showcase, but he refused. Stewart wrote the song Amen, which was used in the film Lilies of the Field and dubbed the singing voice for Sidney Poitier. Amen became a top 10 hit in 1964 for the impressions. The Amos and Andy Show, which aired in the early 1950s, featured talented actors who brought well-loved radio characters to TV screens across America. The show starred Tim Moore as Kingfish, Spencer Williams as Andy, and Alvin Childress as Amos. It's interesting that both Tim Moore and Spencer Williams passed away on the same date, December 13th, but 11 years apart. Moore died in 1958, while Williams passed away in 1969. The casting for the TV version aimed to find actors whose voices closely matched the radio characters. Alvin Childress's natural voice was similar to Freeman Gostin's portrayal of Amos, while Spencer Williams not only sounded but also looked like Charles J. Coral's Andy. Tim Moore did a great job replicating Kingfish's voice. Despite its popularity, the show faced some setbacks. For instance, Tim Moore had a small role in The Cure, which would have been his last role but it was cut from the episode before broadcast. The Amos and Andy show left a lasting impression on American television with its memorable characters and talented cast bringing joy to audiences for years to come. The Amos and Andy show, a TV series from the early 1950s, made notable appearances in three films nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture, The Alamo, To Kill a Mockingbird, and In the Heat of the Night. In a documentary titled Amos and Andy Anatomy of a Controversy, Charles J. Coral's son Richard Coral revealed that Spencer Williams was chosen for the role of Andrew H. Brown because of his resemblance to Charles Coral in blackface. The producers successfully convinced veteran performers Tim Moore and Spencer Williams to join the cast with lucrative offers, despite both actors having retired after lengthy careers in show business. James E. Wall was considered for the role of Kingfish in the Amos and Andy show. The creators, Godson and Coral, wanted to bring back the series in 1956 using a split-screen format with themselves and the cast. 
However, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People strongly objected to what they saw as a very negative and stereotypical portrayal of black people in the show. This led to immediate conflict with CBS when the show premiered on TV in June 1951. The NAACP continued to oppose the series, and eventually, in 1966, they succeeded in getting the show removed from syndication. Since then, no episodes of the Amos and Andy show have been shown on television. The only glimpses of the show after its removal were in clips from various episodes featured in the documentary Amos and Andy Anatomy of a Controversy. In short, James E. Wall was considered for the role Godson and Coral wanted to revive the show in 1956, and the NAACP's objections led to its removal from syndication in 1966. The Amos and Andy Show, a television series from the early 1950s, features Kingfish being evicted from his apartment a total of seven times, consistently carrying his painting of a smiling pirate each instance. Following the cancellation of the show after 65 episodes, CBS sought to syndicate reruns but required additional content. To meet this need, the cast returned to film 13 more episodes initially intended to be titled The Adventures of Kingfish, but these premiered alongside the syndicated Amos and Andy rerun package instead. In the documentary Amos and Andy Anatomy of a Controversy, Alvin Childress remarked that he didn't perceive the show as portraying blacks negatively. He noted it was unique for its time in depicting black characters as businessmen, policemen, judges, and doctors, rather than limiting them to roles like maids or janitors. The Amos and Andy show aired from 1951 until April 1953, with 52 out of 65 episodes broadcast. The remaining 13 episodes, focused on Kingfish, were intended for the 1953-54 season, but aired in syndication starting January 4, 1955. Red Fox, a fan of the show, later appeared in Sanford and Son alongside several cast members from the Amos and Andy show, including Lillian Randolph, Kim Hamilton, Ernest Mahan, Bobby Johnson, and Alvin Childress. Real-life sisters Amanda Randolph and Lillian Randolph portrayed Sapphire's mother and Madam Queen, respectively, reprising their roles from the original radio show. These details shed light on the show's influence and its connections to other works. The Mystic Knights of the Sea played a central role in the television series. This order was the affiliation of the main characters, shaping their interactions and adventures. The camaraderie within this fraternal organization added a distinct layer to the narrative. Adapting from its radio origins, the TV version of the Amos and Andy show made notable changes. The characters, initially portrayed as working class, underwent a transformation towards a more middle-class identity. The Fresh Air Taxi Company, once associated with an old, rundown Model T, transitioned to a later model car. Amos's uniform and office reflected a neat and tidy presentation, maintaining a professional demeanor. Originally, the radio series had been a major success for the National Broadcasting Company. However, with the transition to television, the Amos and Andy show found its new home on the Columbia Broadcasting System, a move that marked a shift in the broadcasting landscape. In summary, the Amos and Andy show underwent changes in character portrayal, reflecting a shift towards a more middle-class identity. The Mystic Knights of the Sea played a significant role in the storyline, providing a unique backdrop for the characters' interactions. The move from NBC to CBS marked a notable shift in the show's broadcasting history.